Well, here is my wood gas charge station. This is the finished product. Um, it's a little cart. Uh, basically, it was exactly what I wanted to build. Uh, saved a lot of time on this build because I happened to find it at a local uh, salvage yard, scrap yard. Had this cart sitting out there, and I believe it used to be a pressure washer cart or something like that. But it had a handle, uh, had a base, and it had little stub axles. Uh, turned out it didn't have any wheels or tires on it, but uh, I happen to have these wheels and tires sitting around in my garage. The stub axles were uh, different size, so I just bucked those off and welded on some of my own little stub axles. So 90% of the fabrication on the cart was already done for me, so that made life really nice. Um, it's the same Industrial Plus 3.5 horse Briggs. Um, one thing I did do is... I pulled off the factory air filter housing, the air filter unit, um, because I just couldn't find a really uh, very effective way to tap into it. Uh, so I just built this little manifold here, and again I have a mail cam lock so my plumbing setup just clips right on. Um, that's the alternator. Again that's that 95 amp GM one wire that I had custom built to excite. Uh, at a low RPM, it, it excites at about four to six hundred RPM, and it reaches full amperage and full voltage at uh, at about eight hundred RPM. So, uh, what I did was I just took the uh, hot wire coming out of the back of the alternator, ran it into this little electrical box that I built, and it runs to one side of this disconnect. Um, then it continues out the bottom of the disconnect through this wire and these are uh, 8 gauge wires you can see I've got a uh, like a post or a stud terminal on each end of them um, to connect to my battery bank I'll probably add some sort of like alligator battery cable clamps on the end of it um, but for my battery bank setup this is this is perfect uh, again those are 8 gauge wires uh, 10 feet of each use some little soft clamps to screw them to the cart and just kind of make everything nice and clean. Um, we have an amperage, an auto, I'm sorry, a volt gauge, an automotive volt gauge. And what I did was I wired that volt gauge to this side of the switch so that when you connect the battery, it will read battery voltage. And then when you engage the alternator, it'll read, you know, a charge voltage and works like a champ. So uh, basically what I've been doing, I've ran this a few times, and again, I'll post some videos of it running, uh, I don't know, within the next few days probably. But uh, I'll fire this thing up on wood gas, and I'll let it uh, warm up, oh, I don't know, two or three minutes or so before I place a load on it. Um, just to make sure that the engine's up to operating temperature. Again, it works very, very well. I've tested it on my battery bank a few times, and... Uh, and I have not been disappointed at all. So we'll come over to this side of it. This is a three quarter inch bore, two and a half inch pulley, um, half inch wide belt. This is about a two and a half inch pulley. And I believe this alternator was designed for a three eighths belt. You can see how it's slightly riding up on the edge. But that's actually kind of a nice thing. It uh, slightly underdrives the alternator. And because I had this custom belt, to reach full amperage at low RPM, um, I don't have to spin it at all. You know, about 1100 RPM is where I have my engine set, and and I'm charging at full voltage, full amperage. So, uh, you know, there was no need to go to a larger pulley on the motor to get the RPM up or anything like that, because I've already maxed out with the setup I have. So, it works really, really well. I'm very happy with everything. Um, what I used here is a a curved alternator adjusting bracket and it's just linked to a straight alternating adjuster bracket that just happened to bolt right onto the side of the motor and it made it a really nice clean setup um, so everything everything works exactly like I was hoping um, again th there's the ground and it comes off of the the back of the motor here ground to the main frame and a couple more soft clamps and again 8 gauge wire with 31 stud style connectors but I'm very very happy with the turnout I'm very very happy with the performance of it it works exactly like I thought um, 
I've started this both with the disconnect engaged and disengaged. Um, I do notice when I start it with the disconnect engaged that it is a little harder to pull. It's not, it, it definitely doesn't break your shoulder or anything like that. But uh, my preferred method is to fire it up with the disconnect disengaged and let the motor reach operating temperature. So, again, I'll post a few videos of this thing in action. Um, I'm very happy with the setup. Everything works just according to plan. So, uh, it, it took quite a bit of uh, willpower to not post some videos of this thing when I was in the testing phase, running it on the, uh, the gasifier, uh, just because it wasn't painted, it was ugly, but I was really proud of it. I really wanted to put some videos out there, but I'm glad I waited because this cart was kind of, kind of ugly. It had nasty paint and rust all over it. And, but anyhow, there we are. Wood gas charge station completed, functional, tested, works like a champ. Please rate and comment.